Well, let me add my happy birthday as well. Uh, we're going to spend some time telling some stories today and enjoying some time together. But if you have a Bible, we're going to spend a little time first in Colossians chapter 2. We want to, of course, on a day where we mark a milestone, uh, turn to God's Word. And so we've been in a series called Spiritual Rhythms, uh, where we're talking about things that uh, we do every day on a regular basis, daily, weekly, whatever it looks like, to, to see Christ formed in us and to see us grow more and more into his image. And so uh, we're going to continue that today. We're going to look at this, this idea that is for us sometimes, uh, I, I think we don't think of it in this way. We want to talk a little bit though today about gratitude. Uh, it sounds kind of just like a nice way to, to ease into the day. I wore my Mr. Rogers sweater for you today to talk about gratitude, but actually it's a pretty powerful weapon, okay? And we're going to we're going to uh, see it here in Scripture. So Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Here we go again. Ready? The grass withers and the flower falls. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth that we find in it, the foundation we have in Jesus made known to us in the pages of scripture and by your spirit at work among us. And so, God, we ask that you would shape in us gratitude today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. These three statements have kind of formed our, uh, the thoughts around our series. You can say them with me if you'd like. Life is made up of days are the sum of our Ha habits become rhythms habits become rhythms so life is moving fast things are going really fast but we got to remember today you got to live today today's made up of habits some things we do intentionally some things that we because we know they're valuable we're willing to put in the work the effort we're who you know maybe you're on day 21 today they tell you it'll stick after tw after 21 days maybe you kicked it off at the first of the year habits become rhythms they become natural and normal they become part of your routine and those really form you into who you are and today i want to talk about gratitude because gratitude is usually uh, for us just a spontaneous idea you know, gratitude is what happens uh, in a moment that it just kind of crawls up your spine and kind of makes its way in, into your, your head. You know, you look out over the landscape, you woke up on Monday morning and you saw, wow, it's awesome out there. It's so beautiful. Now you're like, I hate this. Where is this going to melt? You know, but you look out over it and you're, you're thinking, wow, that's incredible. You know, you know, thank you, Lord. These kids have not killed one another in this house all week long. Thank you, Lord, right? It, you, it usually is just a spontaneous kind of thing that comes upon us. But what if gratitude was a bigger deal than that? It's what, it, what if for us it was a habit that could become a rhythm? And it wasn't just whenever it snuck up on you, but it was the ground that was the soil of, of every part of, of your faith. And so when you, when you uh, we're, we're thinking about to, in, in these weeks, we, we want these things to become a regular rhythm, a regular routine. We talked about how we get God's word into us, how we spend time in prayer. Here's a rhythm that we want to, to make a part of our routine. Make gratitude a daily focus. Now, if you're reading along in our, in our uh, rhythms journal, if you got one of those at the beginning of the year, where we're taking day after day to read scripture, pray together, you notice in that lower right corner that there's a section for gratitude. And here's the intent, that you would make gratitude a daily focus. Trying to, at whatever point in your day that works for you. Maybe it's the morning when you're praying for, through the day. Maybe it's at lunch when you pull away and you go you know, to, to, to your desk or you pull away in the break room or you go out to your car, whatever it is. You're going to take some time and just look for God at work. We're, for, for lots of us and what we hope will work, what's what we titled the evening gratitude, is that at night you would take some time and go back and kind of review your day. So make gratitude a daily focus, ideally every night as the, the last thing I do. And the reason why is because I've become, you know, I, I, this may, maybe this just happens as you continue to live a little longer, but I'm becoming more and more convinced that gratitude isn't just something that's spontaneous. It's not something that 
you know, if, if your level of blessing rises higher than, you know, what you think you deserve, then at that moment you become grateful. It's actually an intentional effort to consider nothing I have is my own. I don't, I don't get my next breath apart from the gift of God in my life when he gives me, you know, oxygen in my lungs. It's a focus. It's an energy that, that, that you, you bring energy to, to gratitude. You, you bring intentionality even to gratitude. Because what happens is, you know, if you read these verses kind of phrase by phrase, I mean, think, think about this. Uh, this is not a trick question, by the way. So he says, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord. Let me ask you for a two-word phrase, two phrase. How do you receive Christ Jesus as Lord? How do you receive Jesus? Two words. Come on. Somebody besides my wife. <laughs> by faith. That's right. Thank you, Lynn. You receive, you receive Jesus by faith. There's nothing you can do to earn salvation there's nothing you can do to do more good than bad that's going to take you to heaven when you die or it's going to bring the presence of, of the lord into your life now the holy spirit at work in your life all of that is activity by faith and i got to tell you for for me if that weren't true which i if i just rewound a lot of my story even the story of the last 15 years i'm someone who who, who uh likes to settle the reality that I can receive Jesus by faith for eternity, but then I like to get really busy working as hard as I possibly can, checking as many things off my list as possible to try to either, first of all, show God that I was worth his sacrifice, which is a terrible motivation, by the way, or to just earn now his blessing in this life. But he says, this isn't how it works. You, you are not earning anything here's a little simple truth right faith is opposed to earning by, by i can't earn salvation i can't earn god's blessing there's nothing i can do what i what i've just as i received him by faith now i want to go through my every day every moment aware that if i'm going to be rooted down deeper built up you know a, a higher then all of that is going to happen by faith. Now, faith, though, look, is not opposed to effort, is it? It's not opposed to effort. There's eff effort is actually a good thing. I don't have any strength. I don't have any power. I don't have any authority. Apart from what Jesus does, I've given everything over. I've transferred it all to him. And now, with that settled and living in the freedom of that, I'm, I'm now free to go trust him, to bear fruit in my life, to give all my energy to that, and to even work no matter how much in this life I tend to want to try to make things about me, to go let all, all that go, and at the end of every day say, God, thank you. E even to make it an intentional habit to do so, because I know it's worth it. Because I need the reminder because it honors God when we go to him and give him thanks so some simple ways you might you might do that okay I'm thinking about this number one daily in reflection daily in reflection again right? maybe you sit down with your Rhythms journal, maybe you didn't get one of those. Maybe you're, you're now having to do it in, in some other way, whatever it looks like. You, you take time, whatever time of day, whatever makes most sense in the rhythm of your life to carve it out. And, and here, here's the thing, it's not, gonna be, it's not gonna be natural. It's not gonna be normal to pause. We've come this far at any point and stop the, the wheels of your, your brain from spinning and say, God, all I want to do right now is tell you thank you. Show me even specific ways you've been active. So how would I, 
how would I do that at night? The, the next episode just plays automatically. I don't even have to touch it. Well, maybe even before you get to that place, you, you end the day, you know, whatever, deep breath, at your desk, in your chair, even if it's as, as your head hits the pillow, last thought. God, I, I don't want to be grateful. I can't, I, can't get, I can't take any credit for anything that happened over the last 24 hours. Tell me how you've been at work, and let me thank you for that. Daily in reflection, too. Weekly in worship. Weekly in worship. The, the Bible says, Garrett even read a verse at the beginning of the service today, and, and these phrases, just like here at the end of these verses, the Thanksgiving idea tends to just get tossed in. Just, it's just like a, well, of course. I mean, that's what he would say. That's what kind of language he would use because, of course, we want to be grateful people. No, and intentionally, we enter in, think about this, Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with Thanksgiving. That's how, that's how it starts. When you come into God's presence, and that applies to even when we come here together on Sundays, what would it, what would it look like for you to even maybe make this your rhythm? Here, let's, what if God could do this in our brains over the next seven days? When you see that timer go 10, 9, 8, it plays down to what? If, if you've never been here before the service starts, there's a timer that plays before the service. I had to throw that in. I try to throw that in at least once a month or so. So it, it, there's a timer that goes down. And, and when it gets to zero, <laughs> when, it, when it gets to zero, you, what if you, your first thought is, God, thank you. I got 60 minutes to just, I, I'm going to start this time gratitude gratitude weekly in worship three at significant milestones at significant milestones even i mean it, some usually at significant milestones it it it's pretty it's that thing that happens where gratitude starts to well up inside you but what would it look like to be intentional with significant milestones, significant birthdays, significant anniversaries? Not to just let that moment come, but to be really intentional to thank the Lord at those um, significant milestones. And so today is really a significant milestone, and, and that's what I want to do, is give some application to that. Today is, is a, I mean, 15 years is a big deal. 15 years matters. For some of us, I mean, this might be your first time here today, and we're so glad you're here. And, and honestly, for you, this isn't a moment that, uh, you know, anyone's expecting to, for, for you to, to have as like some chill, chill bump moment. We're not, we're not looking for that. And maybe this is all new to you or whatever, but for a lot of us, we've been around here for a, a long time, and, and this is a significant moment. I was thinking about like significant days. I, mean, I remember when we celebrated 10-year anniversary and 10 and then we got 20 still to come if Jesus doesn't come back and we don't run this whole thing into the ground which I don't think is going to happen at this point uh, because God's faithful not because we're smart but uh, we got 20 to come 15 is kind of 15 I, you know y'all can get mad at me and give me a hard time in the lobby about this after but I think like you're 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 I, I'm 45 so I've still I think I've got I think y'all think this is true 50 is like your it's like your most significant it's like your big it's your big it's a big one 40 and 50 and I'm looking I'm catching eyes right now with everybody who's over 50 not to say you don't have any big birthdays left I think you do but uh I mean I look I think 50 is like I mean it's like the it's a big one Right, and so you've uh, sixty is impressive, and seventy is. I mean, at eighty, we're like, can't believe they are still here, and then a hundred comes, and you're like, ah, I mean, how this has put them on today's show, you know? But until then, fifty is just like a, it's a big deal. So, I mean, fifteen is kind of jammed in between, um, but it's it really is a significant milestone. So. Just to be real simple, uh, I, I said in the first service, I'll say it again, I used to hear pastors say, uh, I'm going to take a moment of pastoral privilege. 
I don't think that was an old school way to say, I'm about to take some time to do whatever I want and you're going to have to just put up with it. So uh, I want to do that for just a minute. I want to thank, in five directions, I want to thank Jesus. And you say, well, of, of course we would, we would say that, but uh, oftentimes it, in the rhythm of church, it can just become about people, which is important. It can just become about the, the, the execution of things and certain things getting done. And Listen, I, I have to thank, first and foremost, Jesus. I want to thank Jesus. I was, th- I was thinking about this, and I, I mean, I've told a lot of my story before, but when I, I'm starting to, hindsight has a way of seeing how things come together, and I think he in his perfect plan I can see it more clearly than ever before he saved me at just the right moment like at just the right time for my, for my story and the way he'd made me I was 17 years old and I was I hadn't done everything the world had to offer, but if you put the boxes of sins to, in big categories, I had checked them all. I had lived long enough, I always say, to know that nothing else was going to satisfy me that I, that I could find. The thought of having to spend the next 50 or 60 or 70 years of my life looking for something that was going to numb the ache that was deep inside of me was exhausting and then I heard the gospel like really heard the gospel I'd heard it before in the language but it I mean the truth of the reality that I didn't have to earn anything I, I still it's still part of who I am to try to earn I, I, I always want to try to to work and get get stuff knocked out I I didn't have to earn anything he loved me no matter what I mean it blew it blew my mind and like it's blown your mind I hope he saved me at just the right time I was making decisions about the future that looking back now were motivated by all kinds of crazy ideas and plans that I had for my life in ways I thought I could make myself look significant. I, I was, I say this, to, maybe you've been in the same place. I say this to my shame, but think, think this, this is true. I was such a hypocrite. I made plans. I, I remember these thoughts. I made plans that in my future, I could be one person some of the time and another person some of the time. I, was in t- I wasn't just accidentally a hypocrite. I was intentionally a hypocrite. I was trying to prove to myself and to God that I could be two, I could be two people and I'd be all right. You talk about hopeless and he saved me at just the right time right as life was getting I mean right as things were starting to you know to roll forward and before certain decisions could get made that would change the trajectory forever he he rescued me out of a a deep deep pit so I'm grateful for that secondly I'm grateful for my wife I told a story a few weeks ago. It's not a longer, impressive story about how we started to connect. But what I haven't told you in a long time is when that happened, when Sarah and I started dating as she entered into her senior year at Carson Newman, uh, she had just spent six weeks in Russia in a missions context with Campus Crusade for Christ. And she really felt like while she was there that God was calling her to do that for as the foreseeable future. And she didn't have any guys weighing her down, you know. And here I am, and, and I show up and sweep her off her feet, and everything gets, <laughs> gets really complicated. So, uh, you know, going into that 
new school year, she's thinking, well, I got to get overseas and I got to raise the funds to do it. And I got a plan. And she was going to, she's going to raise all the money she needed to go live in Russia for the foreseeable future. And I was like, I don't think you, I don't think that's God's will. I've been praying about it. And <laughs> I'm telling you, I just, you know, you do what you want be disobedient. That's totally cool. But, um, and a, and a year later, we're living in Crossville at a little bitty church where I'm the youth pastor, and she's working to help pay our bills at a probation office as the front desk receptionist, making minimum wage. And it was hard because that's not the life she had planned. But she loved it because we got to be together and we got to do whatever we sense the Lord calling us to do at that time together. And she's been faithful through the whole thing. She was sitting in her chair beside me this morning reading her Bible and praying through her day and that class she was going to teach at 8.30 this morning. At 6.30, just like she often is most every day, she's faithful. I would say this to any young pastor. You should find a wife, not just who loves you, but who has deep in her soul the idea not only that Jesus is your only hope, but that apart from the local church, you cannot make it through this life. You live in a day and a time, I would say to this guy, who, whoever he may hypothetically be at this moment, you live in a day or time that tells people they can find all the spiritual truth they need on their phones, that they can go wherever they want, hop around, do life however they want to do it, do ministry in whatever context, be this and be that. You will never make it through this life apart from the local church. And I don't know if any of you believe that in this room. I think a lot of us probably believe that in this room. I can tell you one person, two people who happen to believe it with all their hearts in this room and one of them is my wife she loves you and she loves Jesus and she loves this church and she loves our kids and I'm so grateful so let me tell you some also some things I'm grateful for for you I'm grateful for your friendship Mentors told us at a young age, other pastors, it will never work for you to be, it sounds, it sounds bad, it's not what he meant, but you understand where it's coming from. It will, it'll never work for a pastor to have his closest friends, the people who actually know who he really is and what he's going through, and a pastor's wife, the same thing. It will never work for those people to be within the body of the people that you you're, you gather with every week. You're going to need you're going to need your you know of course you're going to be friends with those people, but you're going to need your real friends to be from somewhere else or go to some other church or some other pastor, some other place. And to be honest, I don't know if we had any kind of kind of, kind of uh, uh, like deep response to that other than just to say that that sounds awful. I, I'd rather be friends with the people that I get to see every day. I'd rather the people know who I am, who, who, who I, like I actually can swing by their house. And I'll tell you now, we, I mean, I, I think it's probably because I'm just not that great of a friend to some of the people that might have been in the past, but we've kind of burned all the ships and all the people who know me best are probably sitting in this room right now. And that's because you're willing to put up with a whole lot of imperfection in me and, and in her. And so just I want to tell you, thank you for your friendship. We dreamed with a team of people in 2008 about what it would look like to have a church that was completely authentic. You didn't have to, you didn't have to if you were going to go to this place Sunday after Sunday, you didn't have to be someone who was different, some other place than you are now. It was all right to just say who you actually are and the Lord would rather work with that. And so by his grace, he's, he's done it. So thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your service. Thank you for the way that you have modeled from the very beginning. We would pull up a trailer at the Rose Center in Morristown, 
super early in the morning we walk in we would survey like where what was the wedding reception like how 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 much fun does it look like they had here last night and we would we would have to clean all that stuff up everybody that showed up there super early and we would set up we would have church one service and then two services we started getting there earlier and earlier and staying later and later and then we had an opportunity to move into a building uh, rented space in town and honestly I didn't want to do it because I I thought on one hand this stinks I hate this I want to sleep in and on the other hand I would say this is the greatest thing ever I think we're I think we've like declared war on 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 the devil here by scrubbing you know Modelo off the floor at 715 when the sun's coming up because that was just you lots of you working really hard and and we did move and it, then two services became three services and became four services for a while and then we had to figure out how to jam things in and make more space and people have worked really hard from the very beginning you probably got an annual report in your email inbox this week and you saw over 300 people are part of serving in some way here now uh, week in and week out and by the way that's now in greenville and that's now in Granger, who is 36 minutes into their first worship gathering right now in this moment, doing what they get to do, serving really faithfully. A bunch of people who are loving kids in other rooms who didn't even get to go to the service, though they've moved there. So, I mean, it's the, the DNA of the people who are in this place is all over this church. So thank you for your service. And then thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the way that you give. As a church, I can talk about it a long time. I try to tell you personally as well. I don't, I don't, we don't have any other like side hustles or whatever. Sarah worked, she worked part time and now she's working full time pretty much. And, but everything that's in our pantry came out of your pocket. <laughs> and I'm grateful. And our family is grateful how you have been so generous not to just provide salaries for staff but I want you to know we're grateful for even that and we're grateful for all the ways that you you do give I remember the first when we had this whole plan we had this uh when you're going to start a church they they tell you to write the whole thing out and put it together and make it look really fancy and put it in a document so you can send it off and it's called a prospectus which is really like a business plan for a church I think your church you can't call it a business plan but that's what it was it's like a here's the idea and so in that prospectus we had a budget I remember I can picture the page I mean I even know what the page looked like and it spelled out our first budget 2009 was hundred and eighty thousand dollars and we you know how many thousand dollars if we had zero thousand dollars that's how many thousand dollars we had and people sacrificed and I took a, I took one check for $5,000 and I put it in the bank and we opened a bank account and then we had $5,000 and our church in Knoxville had sent us to Morristown with the promise of $1,000 a month and they gave us a shiny new <laughs> MacBook Pro which was awesome it was so cool no turning back at that point no more PCs and that's all we had and God was faithful and he was faithful through you who were very generous we exceeded that budget and then last year just just in like November and December when we talked about giving above and beyond what else you've given this year just above and beyond in that period of time you gave two hundred and ten thousand dollars to our one for one offering and so uh, you can keep doing that by the way you keep on giving feel free um, but that's going to our future. And the reason we made the video, a 15-year video about kids and students so much was because who could have seen this happening? And, and to think that they weren't born and 15 years from now, what, what the Lord will do, there's a foundation in place for that. And that's because of your generosity. 
And so we're grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. And I just want to tell you thank you. So we're going to go eat some cupcakes and drink some Mossy's cold brew in just a minute. So why don't you bow your head and pray with me? Lord, if we had seen this day, uh, we, we couldn't have believed it 15 years ago. You have done more than we could ever ask or think. So God, we ask now that you would make us grateful, not just in this moment, yes, in this moment, but make us grateful people who know that you're with us and you're for us. God, for any of us today who aren't sure about their salvation or aren't sure about what it means to grow, what it means to really have faith that's going to be a, a soil that, that we grow in, Lord, would you help us by your Spirit? Rescue us, God, at just the right time. Lord, what if even today in this moment, this might be the right time for one of us? We're grateful for the way your Spirit works. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand.